Hey, what's going on everyone? Regular Guy Fritz here. Today's video is of the 2021 Honda CMX 1100 Rebel, or what I'm gonna call it, and but everybody else is probably calling it, the Rebel 1100. This is just my thoughts of the bike, not a full detailed review of the bike or anything like that. For something like that, you probably check out Honda's release video of the bike, the Sprocket, Visor Down, or Motobob, just to name a few video vloggers out here that'll probably do a much better job of detailing and reviewing the bike than I can do. I'm personally gonna be following Life of Birch on here, who just recently took delivery of a Rebel 1100. Now, this is his probably long-term bike, so I'm curious to see what he thinks of the bike um, as a long-term bike, his day-to-day -day riding of the bike, and things of that nature. Again, this is just my thoughts on the looks, its direct competitors, and my thoughts in general of the bike. So let's get into it. First off, to start off with the direct competitors, I personally think the direct competitors of the bike being the engine size, horsepower, torque, price range, and style of the bike, which I think to be a bobber style bike, are the Triumph Bonneville Bobber, or Bobber Black, the Indian Scout Bobber, and the Harley Davidson Sportster 48. So let's get into a few of the specs of each bike. Starting with the Rebel 1100, it has a 1084cc parallel twin engine, 87 horsepower at about 7,000 RPM, 72 foot-pounds of torque at about 4,750 RPM, a 487 wet weight, three and a half gallon tank, all coming in at about $10,000, equipped with ABS and all the other accessories that it has. This is for the manual transmission spec, not even the DCT that I'll talk about later. Next up, we got the offerings from Triumph, the Bonneville Barber and Bonneville Barber Black. Either configuration has the same performance specs. They both come in with a 1200cc parallel twin engine, about 77 horsepower at 6,550 RPMs, 78 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. They listed at a dry weight of about 523, dry, which is approximately about 550 pounds wet, um, with a 2.8 gallon tank. Now this is where the differences come in. The base bobber comes in at about $11,950. The bobber black comes in at about $13,150. Now I think the Rebel 1100 kind of fits in between both those specs, but more so closer to the Barber Black, only due to its electronics package that the Barber Black has over the base barber, as well as the front end differences between both barbers. All right, next competitor is the Indian brand's offering, which comes in the way of the Scout Barber. Now the Scout Barber comes in with 1133cc V twin engine, and from what I could find out, about 100 horsepower at over 7,000 RPM, and about 72 foot-pounds of torque at, I think, just under 4,000 RPM. Pretty much what I could find out. If you guys got the, the solid numbers, just comment below. Now, um, the Scout Barber comes in at about 551 pounds dry, which comes out to approximately about 571 um, pounds wet with a 3.3 gallon tank. Now all this coming in at about 11,899, you know, comparably equipped um, with the, the Barber Black and the Rebel 1100. Now there's also the Scout 60 from Indian, but I just don't think it matches up with the Rebel 1100. It only kind of competes as far as a price point at just under $10,000 at about $9,800, but it's got less horsepower, less torque, um, with a smaller engine, but it weighs at about 550 pounds wet, so I just don't think it competes with the Rebel 1100 at all. And last on my Rebel 1100 competition list is the venerable Harley Davidson Sportster 48. The 48 has a 1202cc V twin engine with performance figures which puts it at 65 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and about 73 foot-pounds of torque at a low 3,500 RPM. Um, the only thing is it's got a wet weight, weight of about 555 pounds and has a 2.1 gallon tank. All that comes in at about $11,300. 
So those are the specs, people, the hard numbers between all the bikes. As you can see, the Honda Rebel 1100 is actually killing the competition. I mean, in price point alone, coming in at about $10,000 compared to the other offerings, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's a, it's a very good deal. And then you factor in the weight of the bike at under 500 pounds. It's, there's no other competition that, that can match that. I mean, with that kind of weight and horsepower, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a pretty quick feeling bike out on the road. And then once you add in the electronics package that it comes with, compared to the, the other offerings, I mean, it's got the cruise control, wheelie control, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's, it's actually killing the, the Indian and the, the Harley and definitely, if not on par, probably besting the Triumph as well. And then once you add in the, the typical Honda brandings, um, fit finish, reliability, I mean, it's a no-brainer, it's a great deal. In my opinion, anyway. And then let's talk about that option of adding the automatic DCT transmission. I mean, are you kidding me, Honda? I think this is great for the segment. Uh, what it's going to do is, in my opinion, is just bring more riders into the sport, new riders into the sport, past riders into the sport that probably couldn't ride anymore due to whatever reason, handicap reason, or, or what have you. I mean, I think it's just great. I mean, Honda is really thinking outside of the box, and they're, they're, they're going to kill it. And the subjective part of all this is the looks. I actually like the way it looks, and I can actually see the potential of it, um, of what it could look like being modified. I mean, I'm thinking chopped or no front or rear fender, lower bars, if not clip-ons, unless you like the mini apes kind of look. And then of course the exhaust. That exhaust definitely's gotta go. That's a really ugly exhaust on that bike. But most people change the exhausts on their bikes anyway, whether it's slip-on or full exhaust, either way. So I, I envision Pretty good looking exhaust on that thing. Now by no means do I think the Rebel 1100 looks better than either one of the Triumph or Indian Bobbers. I mean both those Bobbers look a lot prettier than the Rebel 1100. I mean I'm not running out to trade my 18 Bobber Black in for a Rebel 1100. Not at all, that's my baby. I think she looks much prettier. But like I said I do think the Rebel 1100 does look pretty good. and. Also, I see the potential of it. So all that being said, I can't wait to actually see one in person, throw a leg over it, and hopefully take it for a test ride soon. Also, I'm very eager to hear a lot of the reviews, real world rides, now that a lot of people are starting to take delivery of them. So I'm curious to see how it stacks up against um, the other competitors in every aspect. Again, this is just this regular guy's thoughts. Thanks for watching everyone.